Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about vitamin B3, or niacin, and the impact it has on cholesterol. So let's get right into it. Niacin is also called nicotinic acid, and there are other versions called nicotinamide or niacinamide, which has an amine group attached to it. Deficiencies can occur when you have a highly refined carbohydrate diet, you have a lot of corn in your diet, sugar, or people who are vegans or sometimes vegetarians because they're not eating animal products. GI issues or GI dysfunction can also create a depletion of B3 because the small intestine is where it's absorbed and if you don't have proper GI function, you can have a depletion of B3. And acid use. You need stomach acid to break down your fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. If you have low stomach acid because of prolonged use of anti, uh, antacids, it can deplete your B3 and other B vitamins. Liver disease. People don't realize that liver disease can create B3 deficiency because some of it is produced in the liver. So when you have liver disease, you can have a depletion or lack of B3. Certain medications can also deplete your B3, okay? Now, there is a condition called pellagra. This can occur with severe B3 deficiency, or maybe someone who who is an alcoholic and is not eating anything, in, and they're just drinking, or severe anorexia. So pellagra is the four Ds. Dermatitis, which is skin issues, obviously. Dementia, or cognitive function. Diarrhea all eventually leading to death, okay? So, when we look at niacin, it's been shown to decrease, decrease triglycerides, LDL, total cholesterol, LP little a, which can be very damaging to your arteries because they're very small particles. It can increase your HDL, or quote unquote, good cholesterol, right? Now, there are a couple of studies that were done. One is called HPS2 Thrive Study, and it had mis mixed results, and there were definitely some side effects. They were using a product that had lauropropion in it, which is uh, the chemical that would prevent the flushing uh, related to nicotinic acid. So there was definitely problems with that study. There's the AIM High Study, and they used niacin plus the statin to see if it would have a, uh, a better effect on the statin medication, okay? Now, in terms of foods, what kind of foods have high B3 in it? Nutritional yeast, animal-based products, eggs, salmon, anchovies, okay? Also, like I said, it synthesizes through the liver. So you'll need tryptophan, B2, and iron in order to produce your B3 through the liver, okay? Other benefits of taking niacin or nicotinic acid is brain health, skin, especially if you're the type, when you go out into the sun, it irritates your skin. Sometimes it's a lack of B3. ATP production, cell signaling, DNA repair, Insulin sensitivity, so people who are diabetic or insulin resistant, it could improve insulin sensitivity. It's known to reduce uh, inflammation and arthritis, sleep issues and stress management, hair growth. It'll increase oxygenation because of that flushing effect. So uh, you need oxygen and nutrients to get to your peripheries and to your head in order to grow hair, hair and nails really. Nutrient metabolism. So B3 is a cofactor in the processing of your fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. So it's very important for that. Dosages. You can use between 1,200 to 2,000 milligrams per day. Okay. Side effects of using nicotinic acid or niacin. Adverse effects can be flushing, but you can use uh, applesauce uh, prior to taking it, or you can take aspirin uh, in order to minimize the flushing of nicotinic acid. However, the use of prolonged use of um, aspirin is really not good for you. But uh, you can also get itchy skin because of the flushing effect. 
People who have gout, sometimes it can exacerbate gout or increase your uric acid level, so you gotta be careful, okay? In very rare uh, situations, you can have hepatotoxicity. Um, this is usually uh, associated with really, really high levels of uh, B3, or maybe the slow release form with a, a, a chemical attached to it uh, can create hepatotoxicity. So that's, it's pretty rare though, okay? There is another product called inositol hexaniacinate. That's not the same, and I wouldn't use that to have the same effect as nicotinic acid. Now you can also use niacinamide or nicotinamide because that has less of the flushing effect and it's often used in multivitamins. So B3 can be a very important factor in a lot of different things. So if you have uh, issues with triglyceride or management of your cholesterol, you can use nicotinic acid. I prefer the flushing effect uh, if you can utilize it, but niacinamide can also work. Um, you have to remember that niacinamide uh, can, is more bioavailable, but it doesn't have that flushing effect. So you can use different combinations, but I would prefer using nicotinic acid if you don't have those side effects. Um, and it's, you can tolerate the side effects of the flushing, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.